Hey guys, I want to thank this week's sponsor, Carolina Shoes. Stick around to the very end to figure out how you could win one of these license plates right here. Welcome to part two of the restoration of this truck. Just as a refresher, I bought this truck from Derek over at Vice Grip Garage in August and finally just got to restoring it. In this video, I'm going to paint it, finish up the bodywork, and put it back together, change the gas tank. But before we get started, I just want to give you a refresher course of what we did in part one. Enjoy. And this is where we pick up this video part two where I'm prepping the body. I do some of the subtle body work fixing some of the smaller dents and just preparing the paint. I decided to just give it a sanding. I wasn't prepared to take it all the way down to metal. This isn't that kind of restoration. But you see some of the rust spots here. I'm trying to get rid of all the rust spots that are prominent. Make sure I can get them all the way down and pit it out completely and get them prepared for body filler and primer. I got a ton of questions from the last video. What was this paste I was mixing up? This is Bondo Auto Body Filler. I just took for granted that most people know what that is. I've been using it pretty much since I was a young teenager, fixing dents in cars. And then as I became a model maker, I used it more for helping fix up, create, and develop prototypes. I still use it for that as well. But its primary reasoning for being is for filling in dents. And the reason it's so good for filling in dents is you could feather it out and you'll see what I'm about to do. I did most of the sanding on this car by hand, as you see. I don't like using a palm sander all that much or, or a DA because you can go too deep in and around. You see me using it there, but I'm using a very light sandpaper and I'm not pushing very hard. So I do use it a little bit, but more than 80% of the sanding done on this car was done by hand with a long block. And Bondo is perfect for that because it'll feather down to absolute zero and leave no evidence of it when you cover it with paint. 
If I try and build that corner up, it's just not going to happen. The way to build it up is to put more than you need, squish one side in, let it cure, then I peel that off and I have plenty to deal with. If I try and build that corner up, it's just going to be like cake icing. I'm never going to be able to build it up. That's pretty good for the first coat. Considering this is perfectly flat and that that didn't get cut, that means that's low. So I'm gonna fill that in a little bit and then sand this all back in. All right, I'm working on filling this in the best I can. I can't really reach it. So I'm just gonna kind of spray it and do the best I can. My plan is to one day maybe remove the bed. Not now, I have too much to do. But if I ever remove the bed, I will just work on the cab corners with full access and then also weld that strip across the bottom of the bed under the window. It needs repair. But again, there's just too many rusted bolts up underneath here. I'm gonna keep the truck forever. So when I change it or do put a different back on it, that's when I'll fix it. Worked in some of these little subtle dings. I feel it with my eyes closed. I can't feel it. There's a subtle dent right here. I'm gonna see if I can pull it out with a trick I happen to see once on YouTube. Hot glue. Let that cure. I'm gonna pull this out as hard as I can and then maybe hopefully get this flatter so I don't have to use a lot of Bondo. It's pushed in and it's clicking like that. I'm almost tempted to take off the inside of the door but it's not that kind of restoration. Ah. I think I pushed back in. <laughs> I'll pull it out one more time and see if it works. Seems like the kind of dent I'm not going to be able to get rid of. Shit. Doesn't look like it. I'll try, to try and pull that up. I'll give it a hard yank and see if I can't get it out of that crease a little bit. You can see this is a nice round over right here. It gets a little sharp because maybe somebody pushed hard on the door. Put that dimple in there. All right, I pulled this out a little bit. It's not completely out and it's not dimpling back in. There it goes. I'm gonna keep that in and I'm going to fill that. Although it's difficult to fill that because it's such a slight feather, it'll keep it from popping back out popping back in. I believe it'll deaden it and keep it stable. So I'm going to grind this out, put Bondo in it and feather it back in. I don't want to overheat that. So I'm just hitting it very lightly. Preferred grinding disc gets very aggressive. So it's not going to cause a lot of heat because if I get that hot, it's going to want to wrinkle. And it's going to be more complicated to fix. With this long board, I can see exactly where I need to go. I'm just going to keep building that up. I don't want to try and get it all in one spread. I'm going to work that 
and then a little more, and a little more. I have just a little bit left, and the best way to keep your squeegee clean for your next application, garbage. And basically, use whatever's left over from your previous pour, stick it to both sides, and then when that cures, it'll peel off all the debris. You won't end up with this little spickly stuff at the most important spreading edge. Okay, it's been a few minutes. That would have been hard pressed to peel off of that edge very cleanly. And if I have a lot left over, I'll mush the whole thing against it and then peel it off it, throw the board away. All right, I removed these. These are the old straps that held up the gas tank. You can see that modified and cut for the gas tank that wasn't accurate that was in there. Got these on eBay. The whole pattern for one of them is perfect. This one, not so much. Probably not the same exact year truck, but I'm going to see if I can modify by putting holes in the bracket. I really do not want to drill holes in the frame. So I'll put holes in the bracket and come through with some extra bolts. One hole lines up, the others don't. So I'm going to clear that area right now and see if I can get it ready. So that's the adjustment hole, or rather the strap hole goes right through there. And that goes right through there. And I put the brackets on the new gas tank and I measured those holes. And they are 24 inches apart. And here's that hole will correspond with that. And this hole will correspond with that. And you can see the height difference. We have the height difference here. We have that one's up and this one's down. But for some reason, there's these bolts that come through the frame. They don't hold anything. They're bottomed out on the other side of the C-channel and they're sticking through here. So I'm gonna cut those off to give me a clear space here to start matching up these holes through the, the forward bracket. I'll get less comments if I drill this versus drilling the frame. All right, that'll give us three bolts. I think that should be strong enough. Much better than it was. Remember this? It had one bolt in it. So I got the original bolt hole. That's the only one that matched. And I got the other holes. I was very close. I just had to ream this one out. When you lay under a truck like this, or a car, make sure you cover your teeth, because if the wrench falls against your teeth, you break your teeth. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is the passenger door. All right, next one. tightening hole for the bands. All right, this is the bracket we just bolted in. There's a the second one, and there is the gas tank. We'll eventually stick that in there. This is what falls out of my pockets when I lay under the truck. But I'm getting, getting the gas tank parts together. This is the new sending unit. Just the gas meter doesn't work. Something like that. And I might wait to paint the car because I don't want to get paint on the side of this. So I'm just getting this all ready to go. So this is the sending unit. This tells you 
whether you have gas or not gas, that's on full, that's on empty. It's important. It's important. I'm assuming it's important to have that rubber ring in there. And then this goes over this. Perfect. That's exactly it. That's it. It fits perfect, and I can get it to send the unit. This goes up and over, and it fits. This must be to carry a shield, which I gotta buy. I guess I'll buy a shield just for that old tank. But this is all just hose. It's easy, and I can still get at my gas lines right here. The other gas tank was all pushed up here. It wasn't the right tank for the car, so there's plenty of room to work that. some new fangled paint stuff which probably isn't that new to most of the people watching but the last time I painted a car lacquer thinner was in and now lacquer thinner is illegal so this high build 2k primer surfacer and this is the reducer or the hardener rather so let's see how this stuff works my first time ever I've shaken it up quite a bit off camera let's see what it looks like oh my god it already smells like an auto body shop in here now wow look at that Ooh, there's a considerable amount on the bottom. All right, according to this, it's a four to one to one, four to one to one. And if you want to be more of a, a higher build, thicker, put half as much as that in. And now here on the four to one to one scale on the cup, we'll go to any one of the numbers and then the subsequent numbers. That's how many parts you'll get, so. We'll go to four to four to four, or three to three to three, and that would still be a four to one to one ratio. This is how I apply. I could pick up the can and tilt it, but more than likely it'll get everywhere. If you're a little patient, I just always used to do this, and I actually don't have any stir sticks, which would give me more surface area to pick up more paint. I got what I need here. I got up to eight, so I'm gonna fill it up to eight, and then up to eight. This is the reducer. Now this has a pot life of about an hour. It's basically like a catalyzed epoxy at the moment. That's always been my favorite method for mixing paint. This is the gun. And this is my temporary rack, set of tongs and a weight. That's my cell phone. Here goes nothing. We're gonna just try a little bit. First time painting in a very, very long time.
This is the first time I've painted in a really long time and I'm really happy with the way it came out. This is catalyzed paint, so got to let it cure. Body panels matched up the best I could. I probably should have bent this one a little bit. So this puckered in. Let this dry for 24 hours and then I'll come back and block sand it. couple of runs here and there but nothing I can't sand out. I just kind of shot in here quickly. I'm going to prep and paint the blue. I'm just going to do one half and the other half then I'll do the hood separately. I want to take my time. I don't want to have a full mixed can of paint and rush to get rid of it simply because I'm not done yet. So I'm going to mix up limited amounts of paint, do one half and the other half. Now this is the first time I sprayed important technical paint in a really long time. I've sprayed latex and clear coat and stuff out of like an electric sprayer. But to paint a car where the opportunity to resand and spray and resand again like I would be doing for furniture, I haven't done this in probably 23 or 24 years. And at the time I had a lot of practice, but the basic technique is there and you got to just really pay attention to your glare and your lighting and your overspray and uh, your wet edge this is now uh, I forget exactly I'll leave in the, in the comments exactly what this type of paint is but this is so much more wetter it stays wetter longer than I recall lacquer you really have to keep a wet edge with lacquer with this you could spray it and the overspray melts right into the previous painted panel and you really can get a really beautiful wet paint job but of course you need to be careful of, of runs I had a few runs that ultimately I wet sanded out and I think I left it out of this edit by this point but this is just beautifully sprayable paint it just comes out of the gun so nice and uh, I really got my chops back right away and it makes me want to do it again. I also like the smell of this stuff, even though it's probably deadly poisonous. It looks really good through this thing. A couple of the trouble spots. It's a drip right through that handle. It's hard to paint that handle because you're throwing paint at it and it's getting shadowed and it's landed in other spots. You got to keep moving it around. But for the most part, that's really the only trouble spot. I got three really wet coats on it. There's a couple of tiny spots of orange peel I would like to fix. But I think I'm done spraying for the night. You can hear the epoxy paint under my feet sticking to the sheet. Looks really good. This side, I had no problems. Maybe one or two small runs again around the handle, but not nearly as bad as the other side. But in general, pretty good for the first time of me painting and I just touched that and put a fingerprint on it. Thank you. When you see this car parked in a parking lot and you see that finger touch right there, you'll know that's when I did it. This epoxy paint is still very wet. It's 70 degrees in here, it's 20 degrees outside. So. Once this all cures for a couple days, I'll paint the hood.
earlier in the video I did a dry fit. Now I'm going to actually install the gas tank a rubber protective strip I obtained from McMaster Car. This is actually silicone with a rubber backing. My only concern is that it's going to take up too much space, but we'll find out in a minute. Just a little bit of a summary. We got the gas tank in. I need to get the hose at the shop tomorrow. The car is looking pretty good. I'm going to add the badges next. Double check the gas if the gas tank is working. I have to make a badge for that. This is just a dry fit with some double sided tape. Very happy with the paint job. I just sanded this here. I'm going to buff this out in a couple days. Sanded the big drip that was there. I'll buff that up tomorrow. All right, the update. The gas tank is in, the hose is connected. I have the sending unit is connected. Everything's connected. What do you think? You think we got contact? We got contact. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> slowly putting it back together I put in the side rails and I'm going to try and freshen up the interior here a little truck beds paint it'll make the car at least smell new if it flakes off it wasn't meant to be all right so I just sprayed the interior with this truck bed stuff and it's drying nice and evenly and it's nice and crispy black it's going to look great and it's truck bed stuff so it should stand up to some footprints we'll see how we're going to give it a start see what happens hit the gas hit the gas So this technique, I'm just using the, the end of a bamboo stick and I'm just dropping dabs on there. It's not going to look quite as good as a brushed aluminum, but it'll look pretty good for camera. I could always make it again with something better. I got VHB on the back of these. A little bit of a paint trip there, but I'm just going to go ahead and ignore that. Pretend like I didn't see it. Thank you.
Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Click the link in the description below to figure out how you can get one of these license plates. There's only 25 available. Thank you, Carolina Shoes, and thank you for watching.